Welcome back to my tutorial on um, using OpenAI and stable baselines to teach games to play themselves. Uh, in the final, in the last episode, we got F0 trained with the PPO2 uh, with a CNN policy, and uh, we watched it practice after, or watched it play after 10,000 steps of training. Uh, in this episode, we are going to do multi-processing. This is extremely, extremely easy. There's two things, a couple things you need to do. First off, you can't use the dummy VecInc. You have to use a sub, sub, what how's it called? Subproc VecEnv? Subprocess vec, vector end. Yep. And then uh, after this, you have to set one of those up. So that looks like subproc VecEnv. And just like the dummy, so we're not going to use the dummy anymore. Just like the dummy, dummy, you do a lambda n for i in uh, range n CPUs. We haven't set that up yet, so let's set that up. n underscore CPUs. This is where you'll specify how many CPUs you have. I happen to have, we'll use six. That might actually crush my computer, but we'll see. We'll see if that works or not. Uh, so this should create six different environments to train in. This will speed up training quite a lot. You need to have multiple CPUs on your computer for this to be advantageous. Uh, and if you do, it's good. So you want like a, um, you know, four core, five core, six, is there five core CPUs? Eight cores. One of the new AMDs would be good or the new Intels are good. Um, yeah. You can even set it higher than the number of CPUs you have. I have 12 threads, so sometimes I set it to 10. I'm not actually sure if it's fast or not, but it seems to work pretty good. Uh, so our environment is lambda allized. I'm pretty sure that's it. Let's see if that works. Where's my mouse? Boop. I think it takes longer to spool up at the start because it has to generate a vector of all the uh, environments together. But once it's done that, it should work at 10 times the speed. Oh, here we go. So it does about a thousand now. I think it was only doing, maybe it did 500 last time, so I'm not actually sure what the uh, speed up is, the increase in the speed up. You can do other stuff too with this. For example, you can, um, the lambda there is a function that you can write to specify the environments. So if you have uh, several different environments, you want, oh, there we go. And as you can see, all 10 are playing simultaneously now. Ooh, very cool, eh? So that's the multi-processing thing. Again, you want to increase this to way more than 10,000 steps uh, to get it to work better. Another thing you may want to do is restrict the number of inputs that you can use. As you see here, there are uh, each set, so there's there should be 10 of those, and each one has 12 different button presses that it can do. Uh, maybe you think that's too much and you only want it to be able to use three different buttons. Maybe it's like learning to, I don't know, drive in circles or like drive a little bit and then turn left, turn right, drive a little bit, turn left, turn right. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want to specify directly which moves it can do. To do that, you're going to want to use the discretizer, which uh, is an excellent, excellent program. Where is that stored? Uh, it came with, if you go to, do I have this here? I don't have this here. If you go to, um, yeah, so the retro baselines library from OpenAI, that's what stable baselines is based on, uh, provides a couple of agents right off the bat that you can use. They are specifically set up to work with the contest, so they're kind of complex to use. That's why stable baselines is so good. Am I recording this? It would be important. I am recording this, good. <laughs> um, uh, one of the cool things that they give you is this file here called Sonic Utils which is full of some stuff specifically to be used with Sonic the Hedgehog, but we can steal some of it. So for example, um, they have this 
sonic discreter discreterizer dis discretizer uh which does some cool stuff we're gonna grab that boom actually we're not gonna use this one we're going to use the one that i've already modified um which is pretty much exactly the same thing but i changed it for f0 so let me just import this I'll go through this step by step. So this is the, literally the same thing from Sonic that I just took. I just modified it so that the buttons made sense for, um, for, uh, oh, see, it's currently set up for Sonic. We're going to do it for F-Zero. Okay, so the step by step of this, we have a class uh, that takes Jim Action Wrapper, so I guess we should put Jim back in. And... Um, it wraps around the gym environment and restricts the number of actions to whatever you list in here. So normally the game has 12 inputs and so f those map directly to example number one is the B button and then the second or sorry, zero is the B button, one is the A button, then select, start, up, down, left, right. This is set up for the Genesis controller, the six button Genesis controller, so, but it's very similar for the Super Nintendo. As you see here, it's not correct, but good enough for F-Zero. And then uh, you can specify sets of button presses to go. So B is accelerate in F-Zero, and I have limited the uh, actions here to going straight, uh, acceler uh, going left plus accelerating and going right plus accelerating. So basically my bot never slows down. He just always accelerates. Um, you can go through this yourself if you want. There's 12. And they set it up. It Basically all it does is it turns it from 12 inputs to 3 inputs. That's it. It's quite handy. Uh, oh, and it re... Yeah, so we will put it right here. Discret. How do you spell it? I can't spell it. Boom. I changed the name too from Sonic because it's not just Sonic anymore. So now we've wrapped Retro Make into with the Descriptizer and then dumped it into the subproc. So at the end of the day, instead of having 12, we'll have 3. And it should work just like that. Assuming I didn't goof it up. Yeah, that should work. Um, this is just me checking to see what everything did. The guy who wrote this is really handy, too. Everybody in this project is so awesome. At the end of the day, that should be good enough. Let's see if it worked. Did I save that? I did not. Oh, looks like we have to import Numpy. I wonder if there's anything else in there we need. Looks good. No, it looks like it's working. So this will be uh, training the bot with, instead of 12 possible inputs, only three inputs. And those three inputs map to going straight, going straight plus, or accelerating plus going left, accelerating plus going right. Uh, so it dramatically reduces the amount of things it can learn, which hopefully helps it learn the correct things. We'll just let it go through the um, inputs, and we'll see if it worked at the end. Here we go. Yep. Um, so now, instead of a list of 10 arrays, like we had previously, we had uh, per... It's hard to explain, but per one of these, each, this should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you're like, oh, I thought there was only supposed to be um, 3. But this is per environment. So environment 1 gets a 1. Environment 2 gets a 1. And so on and so forth. So there's 3 options. 0, 1, and 2. And that's what each environment gets. Okay? So there you go. 
Now all you got to do is you set this up to learn uh, on whatever you want for an extended period of time. You can mess with the discretizer. You can uh, mess with the lambda function for the environment input. So if you wanted to use multiple different environments simultaneously, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe you have different save states. You want to save it. You have like three save states. You want to train them all simultaneously. Uh, you can save and load. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, here, let's do one more thing. Let's change this to, uh, there's there's more of these two, eh? There's more than these two? There's a bunch. If you go to the stable baselines thing, you can find them all. There's LSTMs, which will remember sequences, which is really handy for games that have uh, longer sequences to perform. I think maybe a fighting game would benefit from something like that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I used PPO2 and trained my, the original F0 bot, for 10 million steps, and it did pretty good. But uh, then I decided to try some of the other ones, and I tried uh, A2C, Actor Critic. And I used the same thing, the CNN policy, and I trained it for 10 million steps again on the A2C, and that's actually what you watched play earlier on. And it worked really, really, really good it was significantly better than the PPO. I don't know if that's always the case, but in this particular setup, the A2C worked extremely well, and I would recommend uh, not excluding it from your trials. Let's just see if it tests. Changing the um, uh, A2C and PPO2 uh, use the same inputs and environments and stuff, so it's this quick to just change it over. You just type in the new one. But uh, some of the other environments like DQNs or um, DDPGs or whatever they are, they'll use different setups, and you'll have to read the stable baseline documentation to figure out what you can and cannot do. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. So look, it's already doing better than the stable baselines. Look at this guy right here going in almost a straight line. Whoops. That's after 10,000. It's not perfect, but it's it's interesting. So yeah, let me know what you guys do. If there's any more questions you have. Oh yeah, there's a bunch more stuff you can do too. For example, uh, you'll notice while it's training, there's nothing you can do. You can't, you, there's hardly anything you could change, but the model support callbacks. So you can do a, uh, in the learn stage, you can do something like callback, e callback equals some function, callback function. Just call it callback function. And then you can define a callback function. That'll take a bunch of stuff. Let's see if I have an example of one written somewhere. I don't. I don't use it very often because it's not uh, it's not extremely I do have one somewhere. Give me a sec. Let me see if I can find it. Do 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 like my song? That's what you get on this channel. Explanations and singing. Does this one have it? No, I don't know where it is. Anyways, guys, uh, you can use callbacks to get into the frame-by-frame -frame learning. So you can have it, if you want to draw like a, a graph of the results as they're being as it's learning, you can use a callback to do that. There's all kinds of stuff. So if you'd like to see that, I can show you how to use that in the next episode. Let me know in the comments, though. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys do anything. I want to see, I want to see your your solutions.